fantastic grenade launcher, but it has some minor flaws, is pretty much my summary for Wilder Flight. I've got a surprisingly large amount of things to say about this grenade launcher, and I've seen a lot of other videos saying that this thing is amazing, that it's game-changing, it's a beast, and so on. And in some ways, that is very much the case, but in others, it has a lot of issues and inconsistencies. And we're going to go over that. Now, I'm going to be strictly talking about PvE for this weapon, but first, I want to talk about what makes this thing great. What roles you should farm for, some ways to build around it, and then after all of that, I'll go into the issues I have with it. So, right off the bat, what separates Wilder Flight from all other GLs is its double fire. You know it, I know it, it fires two grenades compared to the usual one. Now, I know some of you are wondering, does that make a difference? And yes, it does. If you take a regular version of Wilder Flight without any damage perks like Vorpal or Frenzy and compare it to something like Salvenger's Salvo, keep in mind both GLs here have spike grenades but aren't using any damage perk or any spec mods, in this test you can see a difference immediately. Here, Wilder Flight is hitting for 12,153 twice, and 7,584 twice for its impact while Salvenger's Salvo is hitting for 22,669 and 8,488 for its impact. In total, Wilder Flight is hitting for 39,474, while Salvenger's is hitting for 31,157. So right there, Wilder Flight is doing a little over 8,000 more damage than Salvenger's. So in terms of total damage, Wilder Flight is doing more. So immediately, Wilder Flight already looks better. Now, let's talk about its perk combinations and what you should farm for if you're looking to go after this. In the third column, you've got Auto Loading, Demolitionist, Repulsor Brace, Feeding Frenzy, Unrelenting, and Danger Zone. And in the final column, you have Vorpal, Frenzy, Disruption Break, Adrenaline Junkie, Lead from Gold, and Hugulus. So, right out of the gate, Unrelenting, Danger Zone, and Lead from Gold are the filler perks for this weapon. These are the perks that you aren't going to want to go for on this weapon because they get outclassed by all other combinations. You've got a few god rolls here depending on what you're wanting to do. If you want to build into something like Gear Falcons, then Repulsor Brace and Frenzy, or Repulsor Brace with Disruption Break, is going to be your best friend. Something else to note is that if you combine Weak and Clear with this weapon alongside Repulsor Brace, Weak and Clear will actually count as a Void debuff, and you can get an overshield on any class, you don't even have to run Gear Falcons to do that. Adrenaline Junkie is nice, but in higher end content, it's going to be a bit more of a chore to proc consistently, and Vorpal just gets outclassed by Frenzy for me, since they apply the same damage buff of 15%. But Frenzy is a 15% buff against all enemies while boosting reload and handling, but Vorpal is only against majors, champions, and bosses, so for me, Frenzy is the better one of the two options. Now, for me personally, the role that I want that I still don't have is Repulsor Brace paired with Disruption Break, for GM specifically. You get Disruption Break to proc and apply a 50% kinetic weapon debuff, add on Weaken Clear for another 15% weakening debuff on top of that, with Volatile Rounds and Gear Falcons, and I can get an Overshield, that is nasty right there. And I haven't even talked about adding Blinding Grenades for the utility of it, or Spike Grenades for more lethality into that. So I know some of you are wondering, if I'm hyping this weapon up so much with that build or the perks and laying out all these good things about it, what are my issues with it? Well, here's the thing about this weapon. When we are using weapons, what do we usually look for? Ease of use, consistency, build potential, and lethality. You get all of those on a weapon, then the weapon will be meta, popular, whatever you want to call it. Wilder Flight has the ease of use, it has a lot of build potential, it has lethality, and it is overall a good weapon, but in terms of consistency, well, you're going to run into some annoyances. The problem with Wilder Flight is also its main appeal, the double fire. See, if you're using the GL for quick swap weapon or to stun champions from mid-range to longer ranges, which really isn't that unreasonable to suggest given how grenade launchers are unstoppable this season, the distance between the twin grenades is going to get wider, which can make it a pain to hit targets from further ranges and make it very unpredictable where the grenades are going to bounce off of. A single shot GL, at least you know where that is going to end up or where it's going to bounce to. With Wilder Flight, you don't exactly have that security or sense of direction of where those twin grenades are going to go. And the downside of Wilder Flight is if you miss one of the twin grenades fired from it, instead of doing more damage than a single firing GL, you're going to be losing half the damage by missing one of the twin grenades, and that can be a problem. 
Let's go back to the DPS numbers we did on Carl. If you hit everything with Wilder Flight, you'll be doing 39,474 damage in total. And when you compare that to Salvinger Salvo, it is doing 31,157 damage in total. Now, what if you somehow miss one of the twin grenades when you're using Wilder Flight? Well, now your damage on Carl is going to drop to 19,737 damage. Again, this is with no spec mods or damage perks, just spike grenades. So, missing one of the two twin grenades is equivalent to losing half your damage exactly on the GL. The point I'm getting at is that the way the twin grenades fire and where they're going to go is going to be inconsistent, and depending on what you're doing with this GL, it can get you into trouble. Because you could lose half your damage, you can miss the targets, the grenades might bounce off in a different direction than you want them to. They could just split off in different directions as well. It can be very inconsistent. And that also seems to apply to the origin trait of this weapon as well. God, I hate that thing. Now, does all of that kill the weapon or anything? No, you just have to use it in more close to mid-range engagements where it excels. And be aware that at times it will be inconsistent when compared to other single-shot GLs. And that seems to be the trade-off that Bungie was going for here when you use this over a single-shot GL. But let me know what you think. Do you agree or disagree with my review? I'd like to see your thoughts down below. My name's Super, Destiny Enthusiast, and I'll see y'all in the next video.